Welcome back to the Metal Hello. Voice. The Voice. The Voice. Mark Storacci. <laughs> and of course, my, my pal, Giles Lavery, co-hosting today. Mark, I am so excited for you. New album is out. It's called Crossfire. It's going to be released on November 22nd on uh, Frontiers Music SRL. Wow. Jeez, Mark. Jeez, Mark. Oh tell me, gosh. tell me. I'm so oh excited. My gosh, I'm, I'm so, so ex excited. <laughs> You're what? You're 71? You're 71, Mark? I'm going to be 73 in October, like in a few days' time. Wow. Giles is a vocalist. I mean, the vocals at, at 72 the vocals, years old. The vocals are great. The, it doesn't It doesn't sound like you're even 50, let alone in your 70s. It sounds it like... To me, I was just saying to Jimmy, because we were having a bit of a discussion, like, what does this record sound like, you know, in, in the history of, of your career? This could yeah. have come out right after the Blitz, I think. Wow. You know, it's, it sounds like you sound, you, you sound like that. Thank you. Thank you. Really well, good. I'm, I'm very thankful. I feel blessed. Uh, I do look after my voice, you know, as I've said in interviews before. And... Uh, I'm also blessed that I have the power, physical, you know, the muscle power to uh, still deliver what I deliver. I I don't deliver all the highs anymore. I don't even want to go there anymore. It's, uh, it doesn't fit my age. <laughs> but, you know, it's just um, <clears throat> what what's there is for me, like, if I'm allowed to say, like, matured old wine you know <laughs> uh, and for me i i try to give more quality than than quantity in high notes you know today right, right. wow well it's sounding great right, thanks right. thank you tell us about the musical direction for the folks who don't understand they haven't heard the whole album like we have the pleasure of listening to it tell us about why you decided to go like the last first album was more dry great album more dry yeah. but this yeah. one is a little more in the 80s style reverb and big and totally it just, yeah yeah what was what was the thinking behind the musical direction on this album well god sent me tommy henriksen <laughs> from the alice cooper band and uh he's a neighbor well, lives in Zurich with his wife and kid. Just we just talked about half an hour ago, and um, yeah, he he can do it. He he really can do it. And it was so fun writing with him and singing uh, at his place, and uh, just it was so inspiring. We were kind of on on this same level, and um, well, he's a very busy man, so he's he was away with Hollywood vampires and Alice Cooper and doing his thing, Crossbones Cully, which, uh, you know, just just dropped a single and uh, he's, he's dropping his album, same date I'm dropping mine, you know, coincidence. <laughs> and yeah, and this album is definitely harder and it rocks a little bit more. And there's a lot of, uh, pumping good old rock and roll in there. And it starts with like really bombastic with a song called Screaming Demon. And and from there on, you know where it's going to go. Um, until the end, when the surprise ballad yeah. comes out of nowhere and you think, wow, okay. <laughs> so, but But that's like... The end, you know, it's like epilogue, and everybody's pulling out, pulling out their Kleenex, and slowly <laughs> picking up their coats and walking, driving home, <laughs> with a nice ballad in their heads. Hopefully, you know, <laughs> yeah, that's that's the way it's it's it went, and and I I really enjoyed it, and <clears throat> you know, I mean, when when I did the first album, Live and Let Live, I have. You know, just to remind you, it was there it this is. one. Um, there it is. I've still got the same back backdrop behind me. This little one, uh, the other one's still on its way with crossfire with the eagle, and 
where it's going to look more like this. Beautiful. You yeah, know, that's cool. That's really <laughs> thank, cool. Thank you. Uh, well, it fits to the music more, more explosive. And, and um, yeah, you know, Live and Let Live was really, it was like a lockdown experiment. You know, I thought if I'm going to die, I want to do a solo album first. <laughs> You know, and that was that was one that was one of the one of the questions I had for you actually was, is your last album, Live and Let Live, came out as a bit of a surprise. Like, oh, Mark's doing a solo album. Okay, cool. And 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 was it going to be like I didn't know until I heard it. Is it going to be one of those yeah. solo albums where it's totally different than what you did with Crocus, but it actually turned out to be almost a continuation. And this new one is you know, right there in that for anyone who loved classic Crocus or classic Mark Storacci, this is the perfect album for them. Is this kind of your direction now to to branch out as a solo artist and really build that career and keep making solo albums and, and build your own brand? Well, you know, it, it, it all started by by um by chance, you know <laughs> someone up there you know, we, we we were going through COVID and and Crocus uh, packed packed it in, and uh, I was left here with me and myself. You know, I, I thought I've got these ideas in the drawer, a lot of lyrics, and I had some musician friends, and that's how the first album came together. I recorded during lockdown. You know, people were wearing masks and keeping their distance, and everyone was scared, not knowing what's going to happen. People lo losing their jobs, the music industry going down the drain, and you know, it was really horrible. We forget, we, we you know, yeah. we shouldn't forget that. And uh, so, uh, yeah, so kind of the, the first, live and let live was was. Um, uh, it, it wasn't um, a deliberate continuation of Crocus, really. It was just what's in me and, and the guys who I worked with who who, who know, you know, he's the singer of Crocus, so I'm going to come up with this idea and that idea, you know, to, because it fits. But, but the, the new one is, um, well, Tommy Henriksen, we've known each other since the days like, I don't know, eight years ago or so, when I did backing vocals for a pr production he was doing with a band from Switzerland called China, uh, you know, hard rock band. And from we took it on from there. We stayed friends. And last time I met him was uh, when my band, Storace Band, played in this festival where Alice Cooper was uh closing and we we were the last act you know which like goes on till after midnight you know and mm -hmm. then the people were out there and they 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 stayed there and, and enjoyed it and tommy came up afterwards and say hey mark we got to do your solo album you know uh, the, the next one i want to produce it you know uh, i've got these ideas and stuff and let's meet up and so on and um <clears throat> Yeah, and and it happened, you know, and and Tommy was gone a lot, a lot of time on tour with with Cooper and uh, the Hollywood Vampires and doing his thing with Scully, and uh, <clears throat> so there were some delays, you know. It, in the meantime, I got the record contract with Frontiers, and mm -hmm. and uh, you know we finished the whole thing. I I enjoyed doing the artwork with uh, Tommy Everard, Everard in Germany. Uh, he's the same guy who who did the, the latest um, Crocus artwork, you know, album covers. So I enjoyed doing that too. And what's going to happen in, in, the, in the future, it's definitely, I'm definitely going to keep on rocking this way if, if God allows, obviously. You know, he's the master. <laughs> and uh, we can only go as far as our body and our physical uh, shape allows us. Um, but as far as um, my dreams, I dream of of wanna wanting to go on and do another one or two or maybe one more studio album at least, and maybe followed by another live album. 
because uh, there's a lot of stuff which uh, was recorded during the tours we did since uh, 2021 uh, with uh, the first and the second Storachi band. You know, the first band was uh, actually the studio guys, you know, mm -hmm. because that, you know, you, it was the safest way to work, you know, just use the mm -hmm. session musicians and, but the most uh, more expensive way. And, and later on <clears throat> with the new guys, you know, um, which, which I have to mention now, it, it's, it's, uh, there were two guys, two ex Crocus members, uh, Patrick and Dominic and Emmy, the bass player, she's, fantastic and 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 i've i've known her since years doing the rock rock circus project and uh <clears throat> then with the with the new band it got everything got harder rockier you know and and we really blasted the the festivals and and we opened for kiss we in in the holland stadion and you know like thousands of people so it was the best exposure one could wish for you know so i felt lucky about that and um, so with kiss with the scorpions and and alice cooper and, and other stuff and ha, ha, has has so i mean i've seen like i go i follow you and on social media yeah. and i see that you're doing starachi stuff you're doing crocus stuff still yeah is crocus packing it up now is that the no are, no 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 Crocus going on there like reborn we we, oh, we okay. all feel we all feel fresh again uh we've we've had a nice really nice run and the feeling in the band is really harmonious harmonious mm -hmm. and i don't sense any bad vibes for for doing my solo stuff uh you know because uh they know it's not because they they know i did it because I was in a lockdown situation and that's how it started and the ball kept on rolling you know uh so it's 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 like something i'm doing not because i want to leave crocus i mean it, crocus is my lifetime work you know it's it's been my main baby uh since 1979 end of 1979 with a couple of breaks here and there. I mean, that happens in all bands. And we had so yeah. many musician changes and, and everything and ups and downs and troubles and lawsuits and all this. Uh, <clears throat> but we're still together because the music holds us together and our history holds us together. It's, it's a sentimental thing. It's a brotherly love kind of thing without being cheesy about it because we're not <laughs> we're not really like that we don't we don't meet up to go and drink a bottle of wine together or we don't we don't really meet up outside working hours if if you like you know mm -hmm. so it's it, i enjoy every time i have to drive down to solitern where the band comes from and uh, do a rehearsal and um yeah, it it works. There's there's a nice team. The crew is is fixed and it's great. And and I'm doing the same thing with with the Storace band. You know, now it's uh, there's a new guitar player because Turi had to leave. You know, lead guitarist for uh, private reasons, and uh, the new guy is actually was the first ever lead guitarist I worked with when I first formed the Mark Storace band way back in, I don't even 91? remember. 91? 91? Sorry? Was that back in 91, the original solo? <sighs> 91. You did the Maybe. Blue the Blue album. Ah oh, no 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 that oh Vic you're talking about Vic for sure uh, the the blue album unfortunately Vic left us uh, about six months ago. Um, oh I'm sorry. And uh, this this was a really nice project we did, and uh, unfortunately it it got into the wrong hands and never achieved the the success it sh it should have, and then it. It was deleted by BMG 
Ariola, and uh, it's not available anymore. So if anyone's got a copy of Blue, uh, hang on to it. It's worth some bucks now. And yeah, I, I still love love the songs. In fact, I was uh, doing in the Storace uh, set list. One of them, one of the songs was on the Storace set list, and that that's called. Sorry, there's a plane flying over my head. <laughs> I can't I'll hear it. I'll shut the I'll shut the door. It's okay. I can't hear it. Yeah. So, it, 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 yeah. It, it, Mark, I just actually wanted to get to this. Back to this. Is Sorry. is Crocus going to be recording any new music? Ah, yeah. Good question. That's what I ask myself. You know, it would be nice. And I know uh, there's, there would be a lot of fans who would be thankful for that, but I don't see any sign of life <laughs> in the creative way except for the live stuff that we do, you know. And the band has never been so good playing live. And it's really fun. And uh, everything comes automatically nowadays. Um I mean, it would be nice, but you know, who am I to to talk if if everyone else is uh, not? Giles, Giles, Giles asked. Giles asked me a question to ask you, Giles, about the years when Mark was the only guy in the band. Remember that? Oh, I thought, like the like the uh, the Hellraiser era. You know that that seemed that that was a great album that I really really loved, and and you, you it seemed like you. You were kind of steering the ship at that point, and 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 yourself moving Crocus forward, you know. And I wondered if that was, you know, is is this Starachi kind of a continuation of that? But you you did answer the question when you said that Crocus was still going. So, that uh, was, yeah. That was, but but, but what so. but what happened? But Mark, what happened there? Like, okay, is it Chris who owns the trademark with Fernando, or did you all own the company that owns the trademark? How did you pursue the Hellraiser years? with uh -huh. sort of by yourself right i mean yeah 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 well well i i just used uh, i just uh, uh tweaked the logo a little bit you know and uh, we carried on because <clears throat> well it first it was just uh for the rock the block album we we came back together and we had patrick who is my drummer today and and dominic uh, the rhythm guitarist in Crocus back then for Rock the Block. And yes. then we did Fire and Gasoline, light, double live album. Everything was going great. And suddenly Fernando had problems with his wrist and and then he left the band. And this was just, we were preparing uh, a US tour to, in order to get the band uh in 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 a in a in a mode where we can be very creative and and write the next album and fernando quit and we didn't want to stop you know so uh my manager said okay we'll just tweak the 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 logo which belongs to fernando in order uh not to have any lawsuits or you know we we'll, we we'll just then we're free to move on, you know. You just we just right. are not allowed to use the same Crocus logo, uh, but but the band was still, in my opinion, Crocus the same Crocus Fernando had just left, you know. So yeah. this is a disputable subject, even uh, within uh, well, maybe the fan circle. Uh, I know Chris Von Rohr doesn't appreciate that that part of uh the the band's history and you know as as much as he doesn't appreciate um all all the records he was not on you know like the blades uh, is James. that is that why is that why a lot of that music doesn't find its way into the crocus set list today like well yeah yeah like midnight maniac is is for me, uh, uh, epic. That's a, that's a, hit. That's a huge hit. song. Um, huge, huge. Yeah. 
But so stuff. that's why I'm doing it in my in my storage band. We do. I, I was gonna, I was going to ask you that because that that's always <laughs> been something that's been so conspicuously absent from a Crocus set list. Like, I, yeah. I obviously don't want to open up don't want to open up a can of worms, but is he just yeah, plain yeah. old? Not, he just doesn't want to play it. End of story. And that's that's his choice. And so you will play it. Yeah, he's he's the musical director. He's the producer. He is actually the right. main. Founder member, he created Crocus all the, all uh, right. back in the day. So uh, you know, we have to say uh, we have to respect that and yeah, yeah absolutely. Just move absolutely. on. There's so many other so many other songs we have. So why fight? Well, you did you did last time I saw you guys, you did let it go. Oh, let goodness. it go, oh, yeah. Man. And yeah, I'm like, he... I was I was like, man, that's that's back in the set. That's been yeah. like. 30 years since you played that. That's such a good song. And I I, I love the Heart Attack record. That record does not mm. get enough respect. That is such an amazing record. There we are. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Is. This might be right up there with, uh, you know, Headhunter and, uh, you know, it's for me. It one, one Vice at a Time. Yeah. One Vice at a Time. Oh, yeah. that's a great album. Yeah, that's what, I, Heart Attack, so that's one of the best Crocus albums for me. I love that album. That's yeah. so yeah, good. Yeah, it's it's a really good one and it the way it was created was you know i mean right after the blitz and change of address where we had kind of uh slipped more into a little bit of the glam glam rock scene uh we decided it was it was time to go back to the the original crocus sound and chris was was there the the main main guy behind that that sound so uh and that's why he he came back into the fold you know and uh we did that album uh, it was fun doing we did that here in switzerland it was self-produced you know after having worked with all, all these expensive producers you know <laughs> yeah um, and, and and spent so much on on expensive studio. You mean this one, this expensive one here? That's that's probably the most expensive one. Yeah. <laughs> and that, and that's 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 a that's a controversial record for some for some Crocus fans. But to yeah. me, that's just a really really good AOR record. Yeah. You know, that's, is it, that's it, what is, it is. is it the, is it the old Crocus sound? No. But it's very, well, very good. It's it's a great AOR record. Really good songs on that. Yeah, good songs. Actually, you can take a few of those songs and beef them up, you know. Yeah. And yeah, and it's it's the production which smoothened everything out. And uh, I find some people sound... some 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 people you know they you know you can listen to a song and he and listen to it through the production. You can listen past the production and hear the the idea and the chords and the songs and something like "Burning Up the Night." That's classic Crocus. Yeah, yeah. It's it's the production that makes it sound different. I think I love that record. I think it's a really cool record. Hard yeah, like Heroes, Hot, Shot, Hot Shots, Hot, Hot, Hot Shot City. Hot now Shot City. there's some real good stuff on there. Yeah. yeah, 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 yeah. Out of control, right? No, no, that's on, no, that's on Blitz. Blitz. <laughs> Hard Luck like Hero, Hard Luck like Hero. First time I heard that. Hard Luck like Hero. Yeah. 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 Yeah, yeah, that's that's about James. That. So, so we got to put this in your set list of Sorachi there. Uh, let's put that in there. Uh, <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> well, well, now, now, when I started off with with Live and Let Live in the Storachi band, and and you know, I had ten songs to make a set list with, so you know, <laughs> it's not enough. You need uh, fifteen, sixteen. So I took a, a few, a, a couple of Crocus songs. I took songs from my first band, T, the progressive mm -hmm. band. You know, we did Crystal Rivers. And then I even went back to my London days before I, jo I joined the yeah. Crocus uh, to the band Easy Money. Yeah. Easy and, Money, yeah. Yeah, I took Telephone Man, which was the only... Oh, Telephone Man, yeah, yeah. <laughs> A great yeah. song, very, very uh, technically uh, avant-garde, kind of. So it was a challenge for the band, and they still love doing it, and probably going to keep that in the set. That's uh, great. Because it, it kind of fits, and it's very metallic, hard rock, and, uh, you know, ruthless. And 
Yeah, and then we took in uh, Mid Midnight Maniac and, and Hellraiser and and uh, what else? Uh, we didn't play Bedside Radio. We didn't play Hoodoo Woman. You know, it's like leave those for for Crocus. You know, there's some mm -hmm. some songs we don't touch, but Rock and Roll Tonight from the Heart Attack album is in yep. the repertoire, and I think it's going to stay and. It's where I do my my sing along, and it's 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 real fun to play. You know the band and, loves it. Any any so, chances of so now we're going to have all all these songs from this album too? Hey, there you go. There you go. So any, can, it, Mark, I want to know. Two, it'll be a two hour show. <laughs> but North America, okay. Before COVID, and we talked about this before. Before COVID, the tour gets shut down. You're planning to do North America. Yeah. Right. Do you remember that? You're planning yeah, yeah. to tour North America with Crocus. Okay, so now Crocus, I'm thinking they're not coming to North America, but is Storacci coming to North America? Well, that that's possible. I think, you know, the, the reaction to our first uh, single release with the, with the new video, which we really enjoyed doing, by the way, um, was is so far really, really good. Good comments everywhere. Um, and there's going to be... Uh, couple of more videos released and eventually the the album will come out and if if the reaction is is great you know then obviously um there's going to be people in the states who who might say uh let's hire crocus you know so then it's up to putting a tour together or or even we could come out and open for a big act you know which would be great uh and Coming back to the States is really something I'd really love to do. And, and Canada. I mean, Canada. Remember Canada. And Canada, of course. <laughs> uh, but that's that's how it always was. You know, during those uh, eight, seven, eight years we toured the USA, we always went through Canada from, from west to east or east to west and then back down and did the mid Midwest, blah, blah, blah. It never, it's never ending there. You could... In those days, you could just tour and tour and tour and tour. It's just amazing. And, you know, and yeah, now we'll see what happens, you know. Um, Crocus is, by the way, going to be on the Monsters of Rock Cruise in March. It's yeah. all sold out. So we got to touch U.S. soil for a while. International um, waters. <laughs> <laughs> I'm going to fly in earlier and okay, enjoy yeah. Miami a little bit with my son. He's going to join me. And uh, yeah. I might be there. I might be there, Mark. I might be there. On the cruise? So maybe, maybe. Hey, hey, come on. Go for it. <laughs> We're going to see. We're going to see. There's a couple of scheduling things. Me, meet um, you in the... In the in the flesh. In, in, the, in the night bar. The, yes. The late, late yes. night bar up there <laughs> with Eddie Trunk. <laughs> yes. You know, <laughs> um, go ahead, Charles. Did you want to say something? Did I cut you off? No, no. I was just enjoying listening to all the stories. Um, you know, I'm a long, <laughs> I'm a, I, I, as you may have noticed, I'm a longtime fan of both Marks and Crocus. So I, I'm just so happy that there's there's a Crocus that's continuing. I'm really happy that that Marks really carving out a, a a place here as a solo artist, and more records are planned. You know, the more. Mark Storacci music in the world makes the world a better place. So there you go. I'm, I'm just, I'm just, I'm just happy. I'm happy because you know we're all, you know, I, I've, I've got a philosophy that every time, like you know, a classic artist puts out a great new record like this, it's almost like a bonus round, you know, because we had all the classic records of the '80s and and, and the early '90s and the, the classic period, yeah. And now it's like a, there's like a bonus round where we're getting great music still at this. You know, and let's yeah. face it, it is it is a later stage. You know, so yeah, yeah. this is great. I'm mm -hmm. so happy. For, for for me, it's like dessert time. You know, <laughs> <laughs> yeah, exactly. that's that's a, that's, a, that's another good that's another good way of putting it. And but it's not just like they're not just records that are just coming out because oh, they're no, great no. records. They're great oh, records. Thank you, yeah. thank you. Because we, there's really been we put so much hard work into it. You can't believe yeah. it. You can't pay it nowadays you know yeah. in uh, back in the day we had these huge budgets and it was just flowing in you know <laughs> months and months and, 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 
Yep, and that's why those records. That's why those records are still recouping to this day. You know. <laughs> <laughs> did, did you pay this off? Have they paid this off yet? I do, don't know. do you know? <laughs> no, no, not with the income from that record. I don't. Think. <laughs> I, Mark, I don't know. were there any fork in the roads in your career where you said, you know, I should have went this way instead of that way? Sort of like, you know, I, if I would have went this way, things would have been a lot different than that way. Well, obviously, there's there's always forks in the road, you know, but um, <laughs> I think... Uh, it's 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 all imagination and fantasy in the end because the reality is what you do what you decide and how it goes and uh, how it ends which for me it hasn't ended but i look at today today the now and the now i'm alive uh, my my kids left the home they're alive they they're doing well my wife is doing well we've been together over 35 years and it's like it's a story that that one kind of you know i'm i'm not a drug addict uh, I'm, I'm maybe too much coffee <laughs> and i love my red wine and grappa but you know what's that compared to the heavy stuff that you know kids are taking out there not just kids you know but um so of course you know, there, there could have been other things that I did, but in the end, um, it's like <clears throat> one just needs to live and breathe and feel happy. And and uh, I don't think uh, bad decisions are sometimes made, but at the moment you think it's mm, it's the right decision. So you have to go with that. You know, yeah, just to keep keep going with that flow, and uh, then you're gonna be okay. And it, it's a fight; it's an inside fight, you know, to kind of quieten the demons inside you and get rid of them, and uh, just enjoy and 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 like feed feed yourself from the positive stuff you're doing today and right now and. And the hard work, sometimes you think, wow, is this going to be all for nothing? You know, but it's like sometimes you have a bad day or, or a couple of bad days and you think, oh, wow, well, I'd, I'd like to pack it all in. And and then it, it's like walking up the stairs. When you get to the next level, you feel like, ah, OK, I'll open the window. The sun's shining again, you know, and uh, and all that is forgotten, you know, so. I concentrate on what's going on now, mm -hmm. and uh, yeah, if <clears throat> if worst comes to worst, I I have my history to look back on. My achievements, my family is for me the biggest achievement uh, because when I was on the road in the eighties, I didn't even think I would live to. 60 <laughs> the way wow. we were living there you know yeah. and now i'm gonna be 73 and i think uh, i'm lucky i'm i've been blessed and privileged to be able to uh, make a living out of singing which started off as at the age of 14 i joined my first cover band in malta where i come from and enjoyed doing the gigs and going to school on Monday. And I had to take a decision there, the first big crossroad. What there it I is. Do? There it is. There it is. Yeah, that was it. You know, <laughs> should I should I go on studying to be a lawyer or should I go on learning my songs and become a professional rock singer? And I decided for the the one that was closest to my heart, you know. And still is after all these years, in spite of all the ups and downs. I didn't kind of. Uh, there's no. Uh, I don't feel any. I love your attitude, Mark. I love your attitude. Regrets. You know, and, and I think and it comes Thank through you. in your voice. 
here's my fast little story. I'm on, I'm 16 or 15 years old. I'm on Swiss air. Maybe I even told you the story. I'm on Swiss air leaving Switzerland and I'm putting on the headphones on the plane. But back then the headphones looked like stethoscopes. Yeah. Remember yeah. That? They uh, look like, and you plug uh, it in horrible. and I'm turning to stations and it's yodeling. yodeling. <laughs> you know, every station is yodeling, 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 yodeling. Because yeah. that's what the Swiss like to do. And then I stop on one station and it's American Woman by Crocus. <laughs> you made the airline music soundtrack back then. Amazing. So you were you were flying Swiss. I was flying Swiss Air. We were, we, were, we were going to Greece and we're, my family were going to Swiss Air. We're stopping in Switzerland for a few days and we're going to yeah. Greece. And, <laughs> and I'm listening to Crocus on the plane. Amazing. So that's how amazing the band yeah. was and still is. Uh, I remember my very my story is my very first, uh, when the iPhone first came out or the, the, the uh, what was before the iPhone? You had the, uh, the, the iPod. Oh, the, the iPod, iPod. Yes. and I went to buy one, and I went into the Apple shop, and he and I said, "I want one of them things where you put them, you know, you have your music on the device." And he goes, "This is it here." I said, "Can I listen to Crocus on that?" <laughs> and the guy, the guy looked at me like I was insane. He's like, "You can listen to whatever you want on it." I go, "Yeah, but I, I'm going to listen to Crocus on this," and I, I, I said it. And my friend Jimmy Waldo, keyboard player Alcatraz, he was standing next to me and he was like, the guy thinks you're nuts. And I said, no, I just want to make sure that I buy this thing. I can listen to my Crocus albums on it. So I loaded, <laughs> I loaded all my Crocus albums up onto the, onto the, the, the iP- iPod. Pod. I'm so used to, I'm so used to saying iPhone now. I've forgotten it was called yeah, iPod. Yeah, iPod. Oh, and, yeah. and, 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 and that's what I did. So that was, that's my, that's my story. Amazing. Amazing. <laughs> Uh, a, that, all, all this technology changes so fast. You, you invest in something, and a few years later, you have to buy the next. And I was on the stethoscope. I, I was on the stethoscope. <laughs> there was no <laughs> iPod. I remember, I remember in school, people's like fathers were spending like you know almost two thousand dollars on like a, a VCR player. You know, and nowadays you you can't even give them away. You know, so it, it yeah, changes. Yeah. Oh yeah, yeah. I miss all yeah. that stuff, though. Me too. <laughs> me too. Push the buttons. <laughs> yep, yep. Mark, uh, Mark, going back to the Def Leppard tour, yeah, by Romania. Crocus is on that tour. I mean, just give us a little bit of insight on that tour. Uh, it was, it was, it's just like you couldn't get two better bands and a two better pairing at the time, right? Pyromania and Headhunter. They're just yeah. off the charts. Uh, amazing. I mean, I mean. Uh, for me, those were the two highlights albums from both bands. You know, um, I, I'm not going to say Headhunter is our best album, but I think we were at the peak of our perform- performing qualities, abilities. For me, anyway, as a singer, I thought uh, those days it was like I was hitting high notes with such a agility kind of just really Mm -hmm. and then looking back and thinking how how did i do that and it was all adrenaline coffee (laughs) and good vibes and 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 the passion you know and yeah but pyromania for me was also the my favorite still is my favorite def leopard album I uh, love it. I met the guys again uh, last year, went backstage and uh, was nice. Uh, Yeah. Um, And um, for for us, I think the whole band who was on the road then, well, we we were on the road before, like we we became like road warriors. We, We toured and toured from opening for this act to opening to the next, jumping from one tour to the next and climbing up to being special guests. And then we went on tour with with uh, um, Def Leppard. And it was so amazing, the amount, the size of, of the arenas and, and, and stadiums and stuff like that. It was way beyond anything we'd done before. And 
obviously this this gives you that more of a rush you know when you you you're backstage preparing for the show and you go on stage and bang and and the reaction is so great it was like you know it's kind of riding a a bucking bronco you know you have to control that energy the adrenaline rush that that hits you and we gave our all and um we never went off stage without giving one or two encores and we could have even given more but you know you have to watch watch the time and not piss off the the, the oh the the headliner and uh yeah so this was the time when Michael Jackson was at number one with a, a Thriller, and the whole atmosphere in in all the parking lots, you know, at the burger joints and everything. When you're driving up to the venue, already early afternoon, the kids are hanging out and partying, and there's loud music everywhere. And so this this atmosphere is. I don't think I, I've ever relived it uh, to that extent as I did then. It was like magic, you know. We knew we were going to have a great night every night. You know? so, and that's something which is uh, priceless, you know, priceless. Yeah, and yeah. Maybe we'll never come back, you know. Those it's okay. Days. It's okay, but it doesn't come back, but something okay. new comes. Something new comes, right? I, yeah. And this is the last question. Uh, were you so good and so on top of your game that the Flepper management said, mm, maybe these guys are too good for us? Was that sort of why it ended maybe a little shorter than it should have? Because yeah, you were too good? Yeah, too good to be special guests. It was, yeah, probably. I I, I think, you know, the, I don't know. It, it could have been something like that, but there was so, something negative in the air anyway, and uh, it it didn't end up well. And uh, we were we were not on speaking terms after that for so so long, until I think 2015 we we played together again at Sweden Rock Festival, mm -hmm. and uh, I insisted. Uh, to uh, yeah, <clears throat> this guy who was insider with with the band, I said, I, I want to meet Joe Elliott and and uh, apologize for the shit that went on. You know, even if it wasn't us who started it, but our manager then took it to a, a height, an unmentionable uh, thing happened. And uh, so I just uh, said, you know, and uh, he, he, Joe was like, hey, come on, Mark, there's so much water under the bridge. Uh, I forgot about it, you know, I said, but I didn't, you know, and I want to get it off my chest. And since then, it's it's been it's amazing. a great it's amazing. feeling. Yeah, yeah. And this, this happened like in the background in our private time, you know. All right. Yeah. On it's that good. note, good. on that note, everybody go pick up a Crossfire, going to be released November 22nd, Frontiers of Music. Giles likes it or loves it. I love, I love it. it. Yeah, I think I it's a it. return it. to like some badass, I don't want to say Crocus, but Crocus style Storacci music. If, 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 you, if you like Mark Storacci, it doesn't matter if you like the Crocus stuff solo stuff like even albums like bis you know the project you did with michael voss i love that this is just yet another awesome album yeah, yeah thank, you. thank you very much I, you know it's got a little bit of classic crocus from the 70s a little cl cl classic crocus from the 80s got that big reverb the vocals are top notch i love yeah. screaming demon rock the city adrenaline i love the song sirens there's so many and thrill of the and a kiss and we we all need the money there's that little bit of sense of humor we there in the, the album awesome. yeah. i just <laughs> i'm just giving yeah. you a quick over it's got a little bit of hints of acdc there it's got little hints yeah. of def leppard in there it's got yeah. everything you love about crocus yeah definitely that's my review it's, it's, everything everything you love everything you love about mark as well and i think there you everyone go. should everyone should buy two of them that's how awesome it is <laughs>
<laughs> Thank you. Mark, it's it's been Come a pleasure. Back, pay back the costs. That's right. <laughs> yeah, it's been, yeah. It's been a pleasure. <laughs> Hope to see you on tour somewhere in the world. All right. Thank you very Thank much. You. Love you guys. Uh, it was nice talking and uh, really hope to see you. Hey, Monsters of Rock Cruise. Yes, 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 Thank yes, yes. Do your Gotta best. Gonna make it happen. I will. All right. And the first Talks one's on me. Okay. Thank you. Go. Bye. Bye. All right. Thanks, Take Mark. Good talking to you. Okay. Take care. God bless.